I'm at Absolute Bike in Sedona, Arizona, and today Steve and I are going to be renting some pivot bikes. Absolute Bike is our favorite place to stop by and pick up any bike-related odds and ends we need when we're in Sedona. Absolute also has a large rental fleet made up of some great specialized and pivot bikes. These rentals are a great option if you're flying in from out of town, or if, like us, you're just hoping to try something new. While I took out a Pivot Mach 5.5, in this video, Steve is going to give you some of his thoughts on the Pivot Switchblade. This is the Pivot Switchblade. There are some bikes out there that you have to ride for a couple weeks to really get the feel of them. I feel comfortable on this immediately. Pivot builds their bikes to really charge hard. They are burly bikes. We're on the Slim Shady Trail. It's a great intro to Sedona if you're in Sedona. I such a shorter wheelbase feeling than my Bronson which I like. Rear end's a little shorter. I can whip it around things easier. That rebound is a little fast on the back. Boy, this is a poppy, playful bike. Super fun. Slow down the rear rebound a little. Kind of bucking me over the bars. Still poppy rear end. I wish it were a half a degree slacker, but it's just fine. This bike is fast. Man, it just wants to pick up speed and keep going faster and faster. Nice and quiet, no Greek creaks or groans. Front end feels a tiny bit tall, but I'm okay with that. Oh, fun bike. I'd love to see this with the DHF up front. If it, I'm 5'6", pivot puts me right in the middle of a size small. And I feel like the reach is just a tiny bit short, but it actually makes it really fun and nimble. Maybe I'm just used to being on a bike that's too long for me. Oh, this is fun. I can tell that the rear end has less travel than my Bronson. It's not quite as plush. It's not harsh, it just ramps up quicker. Man, this is cool. This might be the bike that sells me on 29ers if I try one with 29er wheels. The rear suspension's a little bit more active than the VPP on the new Santa Cruz's. I wish I had three days to ride this to really find its shortcomings. Right now I'm just struck with how much fun it is. Has good traction in the chunky ups. Bobs a tiny bit more than my Bronson, but it still doesn't feel like it's bobbing per se. It's a little more active. And this Fox 36 is so stiff up front. Oh man, turns the whole thing into a playground. So easy to get the front wheel up, which is hard to do on plus bikes. There aren't very many plus bikes with a short rear end. And this one, oh yeah. Woo! I wish the front end was a little bit slacker. It's a tiny bit sluggish. 
through those the way I like to ride them. Oh. Thank you. I think I'd be just fine with the 160 fork, slacking it out a little. Seat tube's steep enough for me that I could handle it getting a little slacker. That's the first time I've ever climbed that climb. Cleaned it. I like the plus tires. I think 2.6 would be fine too. Surprisingly, I'm loving the KS Lev on this. First time I've ever said that about a Lev dropper post. XT brakes are great. The Fox 36. I run a fast rebound. I like a poppy front end with a fast rebound. How you doing? But the Fox 36 pops out, it still tops out to me. Oh, so easy to get air on this. Yeah. So much fun. It's funny. I probably got six or seven thousand miles on my Bronson. I'm really used to that bike. And this, the chain stays on this are only a quarter inch shorter, but it's incredibly noticeable for a really short rider like me. Quarter inch makes a big difference. Way more playful than a high tower. See how it pumps. Oh yeah, so much control. I can put it exactly where I want to. <laughs> I think if I were racing enduro on it, I'd want a medium just to have a little bit longer everything for the high speeds. But man, for everyday riding, which is what I do, this size is actually really growing on me. Feels great. Yeah, I'm getting some bob when I really stand up and sprint on it, but that's okay. This is one of the harder climbs. All right, sometimes I can make this, sometimes it takes a few tries. Let's see what you got, switchblade. Yeah. Oh, I love Sedona. I love this bike. I love my dog Fender. Okay, you can go, Fender. Go on. Love my wife, Tess. Love being alive. All right, what would I change about this bike if I could change one thing? Man, I would love to try it with 29s. See if that could finally convert me over to 29. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I'm way faster on 29s up and down. But my grin's not as big. I feel like I'm wrestling it to get it around corners. I wonder if that would be the same case on this. So much room to move around on this thing. So yeah, if I could change anything, I'd make it a tiny bit slacker. I would possibly get a 160 front suspension and like 145 in the rear. I feel like I could use a tiny bit more rear suspension. I don't feel like I need to touch the climb switch at all. If I have to touch the climb switch on a bike to make it not bob, that's a deal breaker for me. Because I'm always up and down and up and down and I don't want to be reaching down, flipping levers. And I know Scott has that little lockout thing on theirs, but I don't want extra cables up front either. I want a properly designed suspension that works no matter what. 
Bummer that this has a press fit bottom bracket, but this is a rental and it's not creaking right now. One thing on these new pivots are these grips made by WTB, and you either love them or you hate them. I love them. In fact, I love them so much, I put them on my Santa Cruz, and to put them on a bike, you have to miter the corners. You have to cut a corner off your bars, which means they'll only ever be compatible with this grip. So if you buy a pivot that comes with these grips, and you don't like them, you have to buy a new bar to work with any other grip. But fortunately for me, I love them. They are my favorite grip. Anyway, the benefit to these is the whole corner of the grip right here is rubber. And that's on the outer part of your hands. And on a long day, normally you've got a ring like this on your bars. And I ride on the edge of my bars, edge of my grips. And I have no arm pump, no arm fatigue at the end of the day. Another cool thing they do on these grips, I know it's not a grip review, but I love them, is they have a really big outer diameter, but the small inner. So the outer part's squishy, it's still big, but it kind of conforms to your hand when you grab it. Love these grips. It climbs fine, it's a tiny bit more sluggish than VPP bikes in my mind on the climbs but a little bit more plush and active on the downs and super poppy for some reason off of every little jump good power transfer on this one I just want to get up and go it goes I'm a fan this is the first bike I've liked as much as my Bronson That rear end is pretty stiff with that big Super Boost Plus 157 rear hub. That is the one bummer about this bike. I can't run my wheels on it. I have to get a new hub and get my wheel rebuilt. Now we get to climb. This bike feels nice and stiff. No flex anywhere. Bravo Pivot. This is one of my favorite bikes I've ever ridden. It's great at so many things. And the fun factor is off the charts. The real question is, would I trade my Bronson for it? I think so. So here's my review on this bike. Downhill, 9 out of 10. Fun, 10 out of 10. Climbing, I need to do more long sustained climbs, but I'm going to give it 8.5 out of 10, maybe 9. Overall, as a do-it-all bike, if you only get one bike, I love it. I would be very happy on one of these. Thanks to all of you who suggested we test one of these. One of the very few plus bikes with short chain stays. The geometry is dialed on this thing. What a blast, can't stop grinning. Thank you Sedona. Thank you Absolute Bikes for stocking Amazing bikes in my size. Thank you, Pivot, for designing such a wicked machine. This is amazing. All right, let's get nitpicky. Love this bike. Couple things that kind of bug me. Cable routing under the bottom bracket, I never like that. It's just waiting to get snagged or bashed on a rock or something. Something I love are these rock guards. Rocks used to flip in there and then the suspension would compress and crush it into the carbon frame. The only bummer is they didn't do one for the top up here. 
and you can see there's paint chips in there from rocks that have got in there then it smashed it in there kind of a bummer this is really wide and really stiff but it's behind the seat tube so my knees don't hit it and it's out of the way which I really really like I also really like it looks like it has a continuous seat tube so you could run a longer dropper in there without some weird funky kink in it I like that it fits a water bottle. It doesn't fit a big one, but it at least fits a small one in there. Lots of clearance. This tire is a 2.8, which is what I like to run. But you can run big 29s in there, big plus tires. And then it's got that Super Boost Plus, which is a downhill 157 millimeter wide rear hub, which means my current wheel set and 99% of other people's wheel sets won't fit in there, and you'll need a special hub to do that. That being said, it's so playful and this rear end so short. Such a such a fun bike. I absolutely loved it. Oh, so playful. So poppy. Yeah. Easy to manual. This thing just wants to be airborne. So fun. Oh man. Short rear end is so fun. <laughs> that front end comes up easily. So fun. Hops really well.